Okay, just a reminder that um, next week is midterm week, so there's no class. Week 10, after the end of class, we will begin our midterm. That will go up till before class on week 11. Uh, week 11, we're going to watch a movie. We're going to watch a movie of the Jane Austen novel Persuasion, which is the novel we're going to read in the second half of the semester. So uh, it's not the exact same as the novel, right? When you turn a book into a movie, some things change, but hopefully it will give you a general idea of what's going on in uh, the novel to help you find your way through when you're reading it. Um, and because the movie is the same running time as our class time, we won't have uh, time to introduce the novel, so I will introduce the novel in week 10. So week 10, we do the discussion, I introduce the next unit, and then I will discuss the midterm exam. Uh, week 11, movie, and then before week 12, you will have to read some part of the novel. So I will also pass out the handout on week 10. So basically week 10 is like a very important week and you should come to class during week 10. OK, so we're now on page 1934 of Paradise Lost. Uh, line 296. So uh, this is when the angel Raphael is answering Adam's questions about Satan. So Raphael has come from heaven to warn Adam and Eve that Satan wants to hurt them. And so Adam asks, why? Who is Satan? What's going on? So Raphael explains the story of Satan rebelling against God, and th therefore we get an in-depth story about what happened in the battle of heaven. So at the beginning of every battle, the two sides try to negotiate to see if they can end the fighting before it begins. That's called parley. So uh, on line 296, they ended parley and both addressed for fight, unspeakable. So the negotiations failed, they're going to fight. For who, though with the tongue of angels, can relate or to what things liken on earth conspicuous that may lift human imagination to such height of godlike power? So the poem says that this fight is unspeakable because how could humans accurately describe what happens in a battle between angels? So line 298, relate means tell, tell a story. Uh, and like, what could humans compare this battle to that would let human imagination understand the power of both sides? Line 301. For likest gods they seemed, stood they or moved, in stature, motion, arms fit to decide the empire of great heaven. So on both sides, the angels, the fighting angels, looked like gods. Uh, in this poem, if the word God begins with a capital G, it's the one and only God. If the word God begins with a lowercase g, it means angels. So it says whether the angels stand or move, uh, how they look, how they walk, their weapons, all make them look like gods uh, so that they have the power to decide the empire of great heaven. 304. Now waved their fiery swords and in the air made horrid circles. So like both sides are waving their swords around, pre preparing to fight. Two broad suns, their shields blazed opposite. So uh, on one hand is the sword, and the other hand is the shield. And the shields are reflecting light. And it's such a strong shield, and the light is so strong that they look like suns. 306. While expectation stood in horror. So expectation, of course, means like they're thinking about what's going to happen next. Uh, in this poem, the, the poet has turned this expectation into a kind of goddess. 
So instead of saying everybody was horrified at what was going to happen, it says this goddess expectation looked on in horror. From each hand with speed retired where erst was thickest fight, the angelic throng and left large field, unsafe within the wind of such commotion, such as to set forth great things by small if nature's concord broke among the constellations. OK, this part is kind of difficult, so we have a footnote. And the footnote says that it is describing the order of the two armies on both sides of the battlefield and how they're like going to clash with each other. And it's comparing this to the idea of two planets, Yang Ke Xing Xing, hitting each other. That's the kind of powerful uh, clash that's happening in heaven. Uh, so line 316. Together both with next to almighty arm uplifted imminent one stroke they aimed that might determine and not need repeat as not of power at once. So both sides are hoping that they can win this battle with one strike and that it, it won't have to continue for too long. Nor odds appeared in might or swift prevention. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like both sides are pretty equally strong. But the sword of Michael, and then we, we already talked about this in the discussion. So like the big difference is that Michael, the archangel Michael has a sword created by God himself. That's the big difference between the two sides. Uh, so we talked about how Michael strikes Satan. Satan feels pain for the first time. He retreats. And he feels ashamed because he realizes that he is not actually that powerful. Uh, and then the poem says that he heals quickly because angels are uh, immortal. They can't die. So that's the beginning of the war in heaven. Uh, let's go now to page 1937. This is uh, where Satan leads his army to create cannons. This is where they invent the idea of artillery warfare, Pauji. Uh, so line 470, Satan says, Not uninvented, that which thou aright believe so main to our success I bring. So I will come up with uh, this thing that will help us win the war. Which of us who beholds the bright surface of this ethereous mold whereon we stand, this continent of spacious heaven, adorned with plant, fruit, flower, ambrosial gems and gold, whose eyes are Where's the sentence? Where's the main sentence? Ah, oh, okay, there's no main sentence. Okay, so, uh, so now he's describing the environment of heaven. Remember, they're fighting in heaven. So what are they standing on? He calls it an ethereous mold which means ethereal matter, which basically means uh, matter that does not exist. It's like fantasy matter. So they're standing on the floor of heaven, uh, and the floor of heaven is adorned or filled, line 475, with plant, fruit, flower, ambrosial, so heavenly plant, fruit, and flower, gems and gold, uh, whose eye so superficially surveys these things as not to mind from whence they grow deep underground. So when you look at all of this stuff on the ground, don't you think about where it comes from? Deep under the floor of heaven? Materials dark and crude of spiritus and fiery spoon. So there seems to be some kind of dark source for all of these things that are growing in heaven. 
till touched, next page, with heaven's ray and tempered, they shoot forth so beauteous opening to the ambient light. So it seems like there's this like dark murk or whatever substance beneath the floor of heaven. And only when heaven's light shines on this stuff does it become the plants and flowers and, and gold and gems that they see. Line 482. These in their dark nativity, in their birth, the deep shall yield us. So we will gather these things from beneath the floor of the earth, of the of heaven. Pregnant with infernal flame. Uh, and they will have the energy of underground fire, which into hollow engines, engine here means cannons, long and round, thick rammed, and we will stuff all of these into hollow cannons. And we'll ram them into the end, and the other bore with touch of fire dilated and infuriate shall send forth from far with thundering noise among our foes, such implements of mischief as shall dash to pieces and overwhelm whatever stands adverse. And after we stuff this stuff, <laughs> after we ram this stuff into the cannon, we will add a touch of fire and the cannon will open up and it, uh, in a large raging sound will send forth uh, the noise and the, I guess, cannonball, the implements of mischief. Implement means tool. So he's calling these cannonballs tools of mischief. And these uh, cannonballs will break to pieces the other side and will overwhelm whatever stands opposing us. So much, so powerful, line 490, that they shall fear we have disarmed the thunder of his only dreaded bolt. It will be so powerful that the other side will think that we have recreated God's thunder. Nor long shall be our labor, and we will not have to work hard. Yet ere dawn, effect shall end our wish, because we will be able to finish before dawn. The battle will be won before daybreak. Meanwhile, revive. So in the meantime, take heart, take courage, abandon fear to strength and counsel joined. Think nothing hard, much less to be despaired. So if we put together strength and cleverness, counsel means being smart. So if we put together strength and brains, nothing will be hard and we will not lose at anything. To despair means to give up, so there is nothing to give up about. So Satan has given us his plan to create cannons. 496. He ended and his words their drooping cheer enlightened and their languished hope revived. So his army takes heart and they start to build the cannons. Uh, and then they fire the cannons. And like Satan says, the cannons are very powerful. And then we get the part of the poem we already talked about where Satan's army mocks God's army. But God, remember, wins the war. So how does God win the war? He gets his angels to throw mountains, to pick up mountains and throw them at Satan's army. And then finally, God gives Jesus the power to use God's thunder, and Jesus uses that thunder to chase Satan's army over the wall of heaven and to make them drop down into hell. And that's the battle of heaven. So before next week, please finish the poem. Uh, this week we read the first half of book nine, so please begin from the second half of book nine. Uh, I divided the two halves at precisely the point where Eve eats the fruit. On page, on page, 
Which page is it? Nineteen. Ah, nineteen ninety. So please begin from page nineteen ninety and then read the rest of the poem. This is actually pretty interesting. Page nineteen ninety. Uh, Satan has convinced her and she repeats Satan's arguments and then she on line 780 so saying her rash hand in evil hour forth reaching to the fruit she plucked she eat and uh, you will begin reading after this sentence so we see the immediate effects of Eve eating the forbidden fruit OK, see you next week or no, see you in week 10 and good luck on your other midterms.